I got to see how David walked and talked, how his men looked at him, how they listened to him, how they deferred to him. And I'd been in years of combat already by that point. So I knew a warrior when I saw one, and David was a warrior. So I knew on that night on the asphalt that if anyone had to go back in, I could be confident that he could pull it off. Today is my privilege to award the highest military honor to an American soldier who demonstrated exceptional courage to protect his men and defend our nation. Will you please join me in welcoming Staff Sergeant David Bellavia? David, thank you. David certainly knew there wasn't just two guys under the stairs. What he did, going back into that nightmare, saved all those men's lives. Sergeant uh, First Class Colin Fitz, this man was shot three times in April of 2004. And any normal, sane individual would go home to a life of retirement. Uh, he came back to duty for Fallujah. He came back after being shot by three weapon systems to come back with us for Fallujah. And then he served his country for two more years, getting injured again. He's one of the bravest human beings I've ever met in my life. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sergeant First Class Fitz, retired. And I just want to tell y'all that were it not for David Bellavia, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So I'm extremely humbled and very appreciative for him. I just can't imagine anybody making that decision. That, that's the first thing from my mind, I promise you. That's why he's a hero, and that's why he deserves this medal. And uh, I really appreciate him for it. I thank him for his sacrifice. But yeah, I, I think it'd be quite shocking if anybody did that. It'd make no difference who they are. November 10th, 2004 is the day that many of us will never forget, especially now that David has so rightfully earned the Medal of Honor. David is the first living recipient to earn the Congressional Medal of Honor for his bravery in the Iraq War. What was your initial impression of uh, David? <laughs> Real cocky guy. Uh, very, very sure of himself. When we rotated back from Kosovo, there was no question that we would probably soon go on ourselves. And so we started on a very rigorous training program that, you know, on top of what our missions were uh, in Kosovo. And, and in the course of, of that training, uh, he was one of those NCOs that, that immediately kind of rose to the top as one of our, our strong performers. There's a, a million and five reasons why we're divided in this country. Uh, I never cared what your skin color was, who you worshipped, or who you loved. If you are willing to get shot at from me, from, from my buddies, I will follow you, I will lead you anywhere. That is the, ult, that is the end of the day. Uh, this country is worthy of any sacrifice. When the Battle of Fallujah began, David's platoon was the first American unit to punch into the city that night. And they progressed and achieved their objectives so quickly and so early that very soon they were cut off from other American units and surrounded by suicidal jihadis. They became a magnet for every bad guy in the city that night. This operation was the bloodiest battle of the Iraq War. For three days straight, David and his men kicked down doors, searched houses, and destroyed enemy weapons, never knowing where they would find a terrorist lurking next. David and his men fought night and day, no sleep, constantly surrounded by the jihadis. Then, it was on the third night, November 10. David's 29th birthday. That night, his squad was tasked with clearing 12 houses occupied by insurgents. Six of these suicidal jihadis had escaped and run into a darkened block of residential houses. They were trapped in that residential block, but no one knew exactly what house they were in. So it was David's platoon that was tasked to start going in house by house by house and searching in the pitch black dark to look for these guys. We knew they were in there somewhere, we just didn't know which house. But from the very first home we entered, 
we knew that they were nearby. There was blood on the basin and a back door was open. That was about 7 p.m. David and his boys then searched every home after home for hours in the dark. And from my memory, it was midnight, 1 a.m., when they finally went into the 10th house. It was a three-story building surrounded by a nine-foot wall. As they entered the house and moved into the living room, two men were behind concrete barricades. They opened fire on David and everybody. Once they went through the, the front gate, crossed the lawn into the carport, and entered the living room of this Iraqi house in Fallujah, two of the boys stepped through a doorway into a narrow corridor leading to the kitchen and to the second floor stair, the stairs to the second floor. And there, under the stairs, were two of these jihadis behind cinder blocks. And they started lighting up these kids with a belt-fed machine gun, and they were pre preparing a rocket-propelled grenade. In the dark of night, shards of glass, brick and plaster flew into the air, wounding multiple soldiers. The rounds of fire ripped holes into the wall, separating the Americans from the terrorists. The wall was ripped to shreds. David knew they had to get out. David thought that they had had it. In that living room, we were pinned down. We all had to get on our bellies because the fire was literally ripping through the walls. And then David grabbed a machine gun and stepped back into that hallway and laid down fire that gave everyone else a chance to get back out. He leapt into the torrent of bullets and fired back at the enemy without even thinking the insurgents. He just took over. David took over. He provided suppressive fire while his men evacuated, rescuing his entire squad at the risk of his own life. combat journalist, I, I consider them to be 100% a nuisance and uh, without any purpose on the battlefield. Um, I don't want to babysit a journalist. I don't want to be around a journalist. I'm a warrior. I'm an NCO. Um, and I was wrong. Uh, Michael Ware is the Ernie Pyle of his generation. And I learned a great deal of respect of the role that journalists have on the battlefield. Without men and women who do this job, America will never know what we do. It will go unremarked. Our families would never know. Our citizens would never know the sacrifice that goes on. I never saw that as a soldier. And as a civilian, I see it. And I'm awful grateful for uh, Michael Ware, the body of work, and what he represents. And when I looked up, everyone was in cover except for David Bellavia. He was there on the asphalt on the road pacing like a caged tiger. And I could tell that he was 
talking to himself or he was thinking to himself. So I went and stood there with my arms crossed and waited for him to finish pacing. And when he did, he looked up at me and I knew he'd made the decision to go back in that house. And I was a part of making that decision. So I felt on a bound to go with him back into that nightmarish house. But the fighting was far from over. Militants on the roof fired down at them with round after deadly round. A Bradley fighting vehicle came to the scene to suppress the enemy and drove them further into the building. Knowing that he would face almost certain death, David decided to go back inside the house and make sure that not a single terrorist escaped alive. It surprised me for the fact that it was so chaotic that when, um, I believe it was Specialist Santos, ran up to me and he said, hey, sir, Sergeant Bell's in the house, we got to go back in. And I immediately felt this sense of guilt, like, why did he go back in? How come he didn't tell me? Let's go. And then as soon as we went, right as we were getting ready to enter the courtyard, he's already walking out and he looked, you know, like he'd just been through a huge scuffle. So he and I and another sergeant went back in to this darkened nightmare and I was there when David stepped around back into that hallway and killed those first two jihadis. He quickly encountered an insurgent who was about to fire a rocket-propelled grenade at his squad. David once again jumped into danger and killed him before he had a chance to launch that grenade. Next, two more insurgents came out of hiding and fired at David. He returned fire, killing them both. David then lost contact with the other soldier and lost contact with me. But he kept progressing through that house, creeping through this horror show in the dark. And he hunted down and he killed every one of those jihadis. One jumped out of a cupboard on him. Another jumped out of the roof. Another one was in a room full of propane gas tanks. So David couldn't fire his weapon. And that man, he had to kill in hand-to-hand -hand combat. David shot and wounded the man, but he escaped up the stairs. Racing after him, David engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat and killed him, too. Bleeding and badly wounded, David had single-handedly defeated the forces who had attacked his unit and would have killed them all had it not been for the bravery of David. He saved a lot of lives that night. Acting on instinct to save members of his platoon from an imminent threat, Staff Sergeant Bellavia ultimately cleared an entire enemy built house, destroyed four insurgents, and badly wounded a fifth. Staff Sergeant Bellavia's bravery, complete disregard for his own safety, and unselfish and courageous actions are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Army. Staff Sergeant Bellavia was presented our nation's highest and most prestigious award for valor by the President of the United States, the Medal of Honor. This afternoon, he will formally be inducted into the Pentagon's most sacred place, the Hall of Heroes. I'd also like to recognize uh, some of the members of the platoon who served well, so well with David. Could the soldiers of Task Force 22 stand up, please, and be recognized? Great job, Dad. We just had a great lunch with you all. So. During the Second Battle of Fallujah, David was a squad leader in Alpha Company, 2nd Battalion, 2nd Infantry Regiment. Your actions on that November day, at the risk of your own life, were well above and beyond the call of duty. Your actions inspire us and will continue to inspire future generations of Americans. Staff Sergeant David G. Bellavia distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty on November 10th, 2004.
while serving as a squad leader in support of Operation Phantom Fury in Fallujah, Iraq, acting on instinct to save the members of his platoon from an imminent threat. Staff Sergeant Bellavia ultimately cleared an entire enemy-filled house, destroyed four insurgents, and badly wounded a fifth. Staff Sergeant Bellavia's bravery, complete disregard for his own safety, and unselfish and courageous actions are in keeping with the finest traditions of the military service and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Army. The Medal of Honor flag commemorates the sacrifice and bloodshed for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor by an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. The light blue color with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon. The Medal of Honor plaque will now be unveiled, inducting Staff Sergeant Bellavia into the Hall of Heroes. I'm especially proud of the recognition that this award brings to my unit, my leaders, and my peers of the mighty ramrods of 2-2 Infantry, 3rd Brigade, 1st Infantry Division. Why do American warriors under fire do what men have done since this nation's inception? This is a common thread that connects the militias of Lexington and Concord with the warriors of Fallujah. It is our love of nation, our way of life, and our love by those who we serve with side by side. We defend, we avenge, we sacrifice, we bleed, and we are willing to die for this unique creation, the United States of America. I am complete for having experienced that kind of sacrifice with my fellow men at arms. And those who died, they gave their lives for me they gave their lives for you and countless citizens who will never know them. To truly honor the fallen, we must acknowledge how and why they gave their lives. Their death wasn't a random act or a splash of misfortune. These men and women voluntarily put themselves in harm's way, prepared to die so that we may rest secured at home. The Iraqi veteran has maintained and in many circumstances far exceeded the highest traditions of military service to this great nation. Of the 1.5 million men and women who have served in Iraq, the valor they displayed was often subsumed by political rhetoric at home. But that in no way diminishes the accomplishment of our troops or the accomplishments of my generation at war. That is my Iraq war. And it makes me proud to have told my dad no to dental school. I learned, <laughs> no, I learned much more from living and fighting with these men than I ever could have from a lifetime of doing root canals. And I gotta mention this guy, Michael Ware, a combat journalist there to cover a story and becomes part of the story. You know, before I got to know him, before I got to see him in action, I would have told you he was 100% worthless and a nuisance. Now that number is 65%. <laughs> I was wrong. Michael Ware is now the Ernie Pyle of his generation. His reporting is a testament to what we all did. And if it, it's not for men and women like Michael Ware, our story would have gone unremarked. Most of the men I just described got little or no recognition for their valor. In subsequent deployments, some would lose their lives years later. It is our duty to tell the story of our brave men and women who sacrificed so much for our fellow citizens. This entire military is one cohesive, dedicated force. And the threats to our nations, they don't sleep. They're watching our every move, Iran, Russia, China, North Korea, ISIS, Al-Qaeda. They may be watching this right now. Our military should not be mistaken for a cable news gab fest show. 
We don't care what you look like. We don't care who you voted for, who you worship, what you worship, who you love. It doesn't matter if your dad left you millions when he died or if he knew who your father was. We have been honed into a machine of lethal moving parts that you would be wise to avoid if you know what's good for you. We will not be intimidated. We will not back down. We've seen war. We don't want war. But if you want war with the United States of America, there's one thing I can promise you, so help me God. Someone else will raise your sons and daughters. We fight so our children never have to. We fight for one day when our children and our enemies' children can discuss their differences without fear or loathing. We fight so that anyone out there thinking about raising arms against our citizens or allies realize the futility of attrition against a discipline, professional and lethal force built to withstand anything you can dream of throwing at us. And we already know that God blessed America because he gave us the greatest fighting force this world has ever seen, 2-2 Infantry of the 1st Infantry Division. <laughs> Thank you, Ramrods, Duty First, Dukes. Thank you very much. To be in the White House, to see the President of the United States drape a Medal of Honor around a, a man I consider a, a lifelong mate, a brother, to see that happen, it was awe-inspiring. It was such a conflict of emotions because all of the boys he fought with were there. The Gold Star families of the guys we lost were there. And there was David representing all of them and representing his country. And I don't know, it was, it was a very intense and a very intimate experience. And I couldn't have been prouder in my life than to be there at that moment. He is a true American hero. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join in the singing of the Army song. The words to the Army song can be found in your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true. Who have fought to victory? We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the gate, it's loud and strong. For where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along.